Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 416, Christ Before Us, number 416. Continue to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We acknowledge the presence of God among it and within us as we once again come together in community prayer, bringing our lives to God, asking God to continue to help us along the journey of life never to fall into a state of hopelessness or despair, but knowing that our God is with us, that ultimately all things will be made well. And so for those times when we could have made things well, for those who surround us, but fail to do it, we pause and ask our God to forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Seated at the right. 
of spirit. So the rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Good morning and welcome. Today is the third Sunday of Easter, and our first reading on this day is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of your life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. second reading today is from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel, it is taken from Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And while they were still speaking about this, Jesus stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled. They were terrified. And they thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then Jesus said to them, Tell me, why are you troubled? And tell me, why do questions arise in your hearts? Look, look at my hands. Look at my feet. It's me. Touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, I'm hungry. Have you anything here for me to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Jesus took it. And he ate it in front of them. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. And you, you are witnesses of these things, the gospel of the Lord. And so, as all of you know, we are now in the Easter season, having celebrated the Holy Week, the Triduum, the Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday. We now have entered into the Easter season, a time of intimacy, of growth, a time of joy, a time of awareness. And this time of the Easter season will come to an end. It comes to an end 50 days after Easter on Pentecost Sunday, when the Paschal candle light will be blown out and it'll be placed back in the sacristy again, that the light of the candle has been replaced by the light of the Spirit. Pentecost Sunday, the sending forth of the Spirit 
so that you and I might never be left an orphaned or abandoned people. You know, these post-resurrection accounts are absolutely beautiful. And they can actually make you cry because you're listening to love being lived out and love given for each one of us. Think about the whole idea that Justin, when he read that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, this is what Peter is saying to the people. You put the author of life to death. Well, actually, you thought you put him to death. But God raised him from the dead. And of this, we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers. Here's the mercy of God. Remember last Sunday, divine mercy. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. You acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. That's why those who put him on the cross were forgiven. You recall the words, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. In other words, they acted out of ignorance. So they weren't guilty. They were not guilty of killing the Son of God because they could claim ignorance. And ignorance would allow them to be forgiven. Father, forgive them. They're ignorant. They don't know what they are doing. The tremendous mercy and love of God. You know, if we don't get that message, there's something wrong. Because it just pours through all the time in the scriptures. Tremendous mercy. Tremendous compassion. Tremendous forgiveness. And it's interesting how Jesus, you know, not only came to us as a homeless baby but died on the cross as a homeless man. It's interesting how he was even looking for food when he was in his, before the resurrection and after the resurrection. Remember, before the resurrection, he was walking the streets, and there's this little guy named Nicodemus, and he was, like, shunned by the people. And Jesus realized that. And he saw Nicodemus up in a tree, because Nicodemus wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus when he was walking by. And Jesus saw him in the tree. He said, Nicodemus, you little squirrel, you, come down here. I'm having dinner at your house tonight. He had to actually invite himself to people's homes, because he was hungry. Think about um, the feeding of the 5,000 where Jesus wanted them all to be comfortable. He said, what do you mean send them away? They're going nowhere. They're staying here. And we're going to have that little kid down there bring up his five barley loaves and a couple of fish. And you're going to see a miracle, my friends, because 5,000 plus people are going to be fed. And not only are they going to be fed, but after that, 12 wicker baskets full of food would be collected so that others might be fed as well. Sort of like what we do at our Easter dinner. We feed everyone who is there, and whatever is left over, we bring to the shelters. You see, we try to practice what we preach here. We really do. And so whatever is left over is gathered up in wicker baskets and brought to places like Elizabeth House, um, South Park Inn, Open Hearth, all these different shelters in the area. But, you know, the interesting thing about Jesus, another interesting thing, is that he realized that he was no better than anybody. He was both human and divine. But he recognized that he was no better than you or no better than me. He was a simple person coming among us as the Son of God. And everywhere he went... He made people feel loved, affirmed, and accepted. He made them feel loved. He made them feel forgiven. Those who came with an empty belly left with a full belly. And even in this beautiful post-resurrection account today, 
He said to them simply, have you anything here to eat? Because as all of you know, sometimes when people are uncomfortable, you know, we say things to them like, let's go out and have a cup of coffee and a donut. Or let's go out and have a pizza and a beer. And when you sit around the table, you make people feel welcome. You become part of their family. You eat with them. You dine with them. You do not judge them. You do not condemn them. You enjoy their company. The simplicity of Jesus, who made everyone that he encountered feel important and special in his, in his midst, and always sent them forth, with one exception, of feeling better about themselves when they left him than when they first encountered him. And that's really, as I see it, one of the purposes of you coming to Mass. It's like a pep talk, not only for you, but for myself, so that we keep going. We don't become discouraged. We don't despair. We don't give up hope. And why? Because you heard it again twice today again in those readings, that we are witnesses of this. We have witnessed the love of God. And we're not, remember, whatever we see in terms of Christ's example, the challenge becomes to live it out. And that's where the problem becomes. You know, it's easier said than done. It's easier for me to preach the message than to live the message. And there is the challenge. Are we really going beyond ourselves? You know, in this community of Holy Trinity, I see how people do that all the time. You know, today there are at least 10 people, I believe, right now giving out sneakers and socks and underwear to people through the Footwear to Care program. An amazing program that next Saturday we're having a little sound therapy thing downstairs. If you want to come, I put the notice in the bulletin. But this group of people from your parish, from my parish, are right now helping podiatrists to measure people's feet, to check their feet out for various conditions, to provide them with a new pair of sneakers, new socks, underwear if needed, you see, that's the gospel. There it is. You know, if we're just going to come to church, forget it. Forget it. We're better off to stay home and stay in bed, really. But, you know, we make a difference in the community, and I know we do. So oftentimes I get calls from very... I just got a call the other day from Mercy Shelter thanking us. I said, well, for thanking us for what? They said, you know, what your parish does does not go unnoticed. I said, but we're not looking for that. She says, I don't care if you're looking or not. She says, I just want to tell you the difference you make it at a place, uh, Mercy Shelter, she said, and I know in many other places as well. Because we attempt to put into action what we profess to believe in word. Otherwise, why bother? Why bother? You know, sometimes I know people can drive you crazy. They drive me crazy, believe me. Sometimes they really do. Where at a certain point I have to close my shades in the house and I don't answer the door. And I say that that's my, my time. That's my time. Because we all have to give time to ourselves to rejuvenate, to rest, right? Otherwise, we're of no good to anybody. But people can actually drain you. And I think that I get drained mostly psychologically, mentally. I feel drained sometimes. Where it actually makes me very tired. Because I feel like sometimes I, I don't want to listen to any more, you know, problems. I don't want to listen to a lot of this pain anymore. I want to hear some good news. I want to hear, you know, something good that's happening in people's lives. And so often, you know, and I, I understand how it works, you know, you call people that you trust. You call people that you want to share your life with. And I feel honored that people want to do that with me. But, you know, I feel their pain too. When people tell me, you know, the, these lives that they have, I feel for them. I have empathy for them. And so that can drain you at times. Um, but that's really what our role is. And so think about that today at some point. You know, how are you a living witness to the presence of God, right? How do I personally witness to God's presence in the world? How do I prove that? How do I show that? Because remember that uh, the proof is in the pudding, they say. 
You know, actions speak louder than words. Put your money where your mouth is. And so we are called to do what Jesus did. And today I am so proud of our people. I would tell you who they are, but I don't think they want their names mentioned, but who are dedicating a good portion of their day today to help to distribute those sneakers and socks and underwear, whatever people need. And they're anticipating over 200 people coming today to receive that. And remember that Footwear to Care, the program I'm talking about, initially started out here at Holy Trinity eight years ago. And we had so many people come that they could not have it here again. There were just too many people that came to it. And it's evolved into this great uh, nonprofit organization now that helps people. And in the wintertime, they will give them, you know, thermal socks and boots and hand warmers and all that because so many people are hurting in many, many ways. And so we are witnesses of this. We have been sent forth to proclaim the gospel in word and in action. And if there's a, if there's a time when you're not sure whether to say the word or do the action, my advice would be do the action and save the words for some other time. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. It is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. In the life of the world to come, amen. In acknowledging that all of our prayers are heard by God, let us continue to pray. Today's Mass is being celebrated in honor of Thomas Porto on the 27th anniversary requested by his family. Please keep him and the family in your hearts and prayers. The response to our petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church be ever thankful of the gifts of the earth and the graces that flow from the real presence of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that government leaders revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural birth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed and the underemployed be comforted by God, who knows all needs and the longings of their hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in a prison of isolation be welcomed and comforted by the hospitality of a loving community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that the members of this congregation, united in love and service, be perfected in the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We acknowledge also the unrest, the division that exists in our world, and pray in a special way at this time for some type of negotiations, peaceful negotiations, between uh, Iran, Iraq, Israel, the Gaza, as that situation continues to escalate, we place this in the hands of the Prince of Peace and Savior of the world as we ask him to one day bring peace to the minds and hearts of all of God's people all over the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And Almighty Father, you have heard our prayers Grant us your peace, increase within us the gift of your wisdom through Christ our Lord. Oh! 
table has been prepared. Please pray that this sacrifice, the sacrifice of our own lives, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. And receive, O Lord, these offerings of your church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. And it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. We praise you with greater joy during this Easter season when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For Jesus is the true Lamb, the Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, we sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. of all that is holy. Let your spirit come upon bread and wine so that they may become for us the body, the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For before Jesus was given up to his death, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and passed it among his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was completed, Jesus took the chalice, and once again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you 
and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. May all of us who share in this body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by God's Holy Spirit. And remembering your church throughout the world, make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and all of God's people. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all who have done your will throughout the ages, may we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom among us and within us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil, and grant us peace and your mercy. Keep us free from sin, protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my own peace I give you. Look not upon our weaknesses, but look upon our faith and grant to us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. We are invited to share a sign of that peace with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worth. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
There is a flyer in the bulletin this weekend if you want to take a look at that sound healing event that will take place uh, this coming Saturday from um, from 1 to 2.30 in the church hall and all of the uh, proceeds that will go to that footwear to program that I talked about today. Also, after our Mass Day, I hope you can make it to come downstairs for coffee and donuts. The Monroe's, Kathy and um, her husband Chris, are sponsoring that today. So if you can come down for a few minutes, I would be grateful for a couple reasons. One, it gives you a chance to get to know each other better, and it gives me a chance to get to know you better as well. And so hopefully, you know, if you can come down for at least a few minutes to, even if you just want to grab a cup of coffee and a donut and bring it with you. Because um, remember, donuts and coffee always taste better when they're free. free. Thank you. And so, and so this week, I, um, I see, we see, sort of received a lot of bad news of things that are happening in people's lives. But I want to share, share something good that happened in uh, one of my friend's lives. Her name is um, Milda Garrett Neville. Now, Milda is a parishioner here at Holy Trinity. Now, how many of you have been to Col ha Harry's in Colchester? How many? That's all? Oh, that's a lot. Okay, so we can get a bus. So this past week or two weeks ago, uh, Harry's in Colchester was... Um, received the award for the best hamburger in Connecticut. And that's Milda's place. Milda, stand up. Come on, so they know who you are. Come on. This is Milda. <laughs> Harry's in Colchester. And so, Milda, I expect a free hamburger for this. <laughs> Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you for any financial donation you made to our parish as well. Please stand as we continue to pray. I'm thinking now, since, since I did that to Milda, I might slide out the side door today. <laughs> She'll be ready to kill me. And so look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And now may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. We go in peace to love and serve our God in one another. Amen. Our sessional hymn is number 178, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 178.
Vincent. 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 